Hey, this is Edwin Dearborn, and I'm with Ronnie Jones, global digital nomad, traveler, and not only that, he's a very successful YouTuber, and he's going to tell you his secrets on how he's leveraged YouTube to build his brand. Hey, so here we are, successful YouTuber, global travel and entrepreneur, Ronnie <laughs> Jones, coming from Egypt, of all places. Yep. yep, in Cairo. In Cairo, Egypt. Wow, this is the first time I've ever done a live stream from somebody in Cairo, Egypt. So first of all, welcome to Growth Driven, and uh, thanks for your time. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to be you know, um, talking about some very dynamic things that you're involved in. Uh, we got introduced through a mutual friend. You're originally from St. Louis, but you're off in Cairo right now. And looking at your show, and I'm going to show the, the link here where people can find out about you, where the Joneses, uh, dot com. you've got this very interesting lifestyle, which is you're taking your family around the world You've got a YouTube channel with how many subscribers? Uh, I think we just hit 70K. Wow, 70,000 subscribers, probably millions of views. And you're also a digital nomad where you're operating your business still that's in St. Louis. Is that correct? That's correct. Great. So start from the beginning. Like, How did you start into business? And tell me how this journey evolved. Well, I think, um, okay, so I've been in a lot of different businesses and I've, uh, you know, I've had some success and I've had a tremendous amount of failures. I mean, just so, so many failures. Right. It's like, sometimes I got to remind myself, no, I've, I've had more successes than failures. Cause you know, I've had a lot of failures, but obviously I, I have had successes. I, we've been traveling full time for three years now. So, um, obviously if you could travel full time for three years, uh, with a family, you know, and go to a lot of different countries and have some amazing experiences, you know, you have to, you have to acknowledge the fact that yes, you've had more successes. So, um, I think, you know, I mean, it took me a long time to get to this point. It wasn't like overnight because I don't have a business that is traditionally, uh, what you would have as a digital nomad. Uh, you know, I mean, I have construction company in St. Louis, you know, who, who, you know, it's like, I'm not a web developer. I'm not a, you know, I don't have a, you know, I don't make a lot of money on, you know, I make no money from the YouTube channel. Uh, I mean, I don't say no money, but not enough to live on by any, right, any stretch right. of imagination. Right. So, and definitely not getting started. You know, when you're getting started, it takes years just to get something rolling on YouTube, you know, unless you're like a gamer or something, you know, my kids watch these gamers that, you know, <laughs> get to a million subs and, you know, 13 minutes. Yeah, but, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, for, you know, I mean, we do, we have a YouTube channel, we do family travel, you know, family travel is not some hot, you know, sexy, uh, YouTube, uh, area it just isn't, but you know, first and foremost, it's, it's for us. Uh, and, uh, you know, and it's fun to do, it's a creative outlet, uh, when, you know, so, but like I was saying, it didn't happen overnight. It took a long time to get here, but the main thing that I always focused on is, how, whenever I'm starting a company, how do I not do this job that attaches me to a location? That's always been my main thought. And in the beginning, it wasn't because I wanted to travel. That wasn't even the main reason. I just, for some reason, and had it in the back of my mind that I don't want to have to go into an office every day. I want to have freedom. I want to have freedom to just not go into the office if I don't want to. And then once I achieved that, after I achieved that, I said, Hey, you know, since I don't have to go in the office and I can make money, you know, I could be on the other side of the world and still make money. So uh, that's how that happened. Uh, right. But you well, know, and I think the great takeaway here for people that are watching is you really started out with the goal in mind, not to be yeah. imprisoned by your business. That's true. So that that began the whole process of how do I build systems? How do I make this thing? passable to the next guy, mm -hmm. whether I'm in the office or not, it can operate without my physical presence there. You started out uh, with that mindset. 
hundred percent. You hit it. You hit it right. You hit it right there. Systems. How do I build systems? How do mm-hmm. I build these things that will get me away from the office? Totally true. You know, someone once said systems are the solution. Why? What brought you? And tell me kind of the process you went through of how you built your systems to get you where you're at right now. Uh, well, you know, obviously, I, you know, you have to be uh, away, so you have to be able to, you have to have, you have to have information. You know, mm-hmm. you, you have to have a lot of information because I am an owner of a company, so I have to have information. I have to be able to make decisions. So I had to put in place. Um, online systems, you know, so, you, you know, and, you know, anybody who's trying to put a, together a CRM or a uh, production uh, manager software or something like that, um, you know, they, they, uh, they've gone through it. They know there's, there's a million of them out there and there's a lot to figure out. And, and even though you don't have to be extremely say code savvy or, you know, software savvy or something like that, you still have to know quite a bit uh, in order to navigate all these different systems. And I do not have a computer background, but I did have to learn and I did have to put together, uh, you know, different combinations of uh, already extant softwares to build the system that I have in place today, if that answers your question. It totally answers my question. And what I love is that you didn't la- you didn't allow the lack of education, which I hear all the time. Well, I'm not trained in that. You just said, I want the lifestyle. And you forced yourself to learn how to take existing technologies and mesh them together to give you the opportunity and direction you wanted to follow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I grew up, you know, only experience I had was helping my dad build houses. You know, that's, that's the only expense that, uh, you know, I didn't even have a computer until I was like 20 something. Wow. So, you know, so I didn't, I didn't have a but I had to, you know, I, that's, it's what it is. I just had to learn. I had, I had to do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you force yourself to learn. If you don't mind me asking, can you get into the details of, of the CRM you use? Cause I get asked that all the time. What's yeah, like, do you use? so I use Podio. Okay. And I've been using Podio for years. I, I, I had a real estate, uh, you know, business where I bought and sold properties at, at one point a couple of years ago. And a lot of the real estate guys were using Podio. So I started learning a little bit about Podio. I uh, started getting mentored by a guy who was using Podio. And so I started learning a little bit about it. And so I took the Podio. I'm like, mm, I started seeing the possibilities because it's very customizable. It's not a out of the box solution. In fact, it's pretty much wholly customizable, but there's a lot of external, you know, external businesses that can tie in a lot of integrations is what they Mm. say that can tie into putting a a tremendous amount of integrations. So I started seeing how I could use this for my, you know, construction company, but it's mainly roofing, siding, gutters, exterior construction. And, um, I could, I could see how, I could start tying that in. So I started tying that in and I started using it and building all kinds of automations for the, uh, for the sales guys, building all kinds of automations for the production manager. And then I even, because that kind of opened up the door because it's, it's not like you have to code, but you do have to build apps inside the system, drag and drop different fields. It's not super complicated, but there is some, you know, a little bit of programming knowledge that you have to have if you want to start making it automated. Mm -hmm. So you can build the structure. Anybody could go into Podio, create a free account, start building apps and that sort of thing is, but it does take a little bit more uh, homework to start making things do things when you click a button. So, you know, so then I, that kind of opened up that door and then I created, I hired guys to create me custom estimating softwares. And that was a lot of money, a tremendous <laughs> amount of time just going in developers. Because anybody who's got, ever tried to develop from scratch software, oh my goodness. You just, I mean, because, you know, not, there are so many different programming languages out there, so many possible ways you could go into doing something. It's just, it'll blow your mind. And then, you know, and then dealing with software guys, you know, it's not cheap. 
And then if you try to go, you know, to say India or Pakistan or something like that to get the guys that are cheaper, then you don't get the quality. You just don't. So anyway, so that, so, but eventually after many iterations, I built a very, very successful, very awesome estimating software. That's the best I've seen uh, for my guys. And it makes, it just automates everything. So that, and then a couple other small little things that I tie into it. Uh, and I could go into a few examples of some specific automations that we do that I think is cool if you're interested. Yeah, totally. But before we get into those details, because I'm sure if there's a construction or a siting guy watching this, he's going to want to know. But my question is, do you sell? Have you marketed this new uh, software that other people could buy and take advantage of? We actually are looking into that. Uh, come to think of it, uh, right now I'm working with uh, a developer in um, uh, Slovakia, okay. and uh, he's uh, he's ended up being this the just a brilliant mind when it comes to this, and he built me just the best possible. So it's like my fifth iteration of this particular system is just genius, and it just works so smoothly. The interface is just he's just got a mind for that. Anyway, so we're looking at it right now. But COVID kind of hit and, you know, kind of yeah. threw everything out of whack. And in certain countries where they had lockdowns, it hurt, you know, it was even more painful. And he's in one of those areas. So. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I think, you know, when we get past that uh, COVID madness at some point in the future, I think that there's, there would be a lot of interest in getting that type of software as well as a training system. Because I know, and, and I'm sure you've observed the same thing is, certain industries, they don't adapt to technology very rapidly and it really puts them behind in, as far as a competitive advantage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know guys are still using paper contracts and, you know, paper, everything, paper files, you know, so I, I do, I do understand that. Yeah. It's crazy. Good. So why don't you tell me maybe two or three of your most favorite features of whatever you've developed in working with Podio and you've integrated, you put a lot of effort and development a lot of money, which is awesome, but that dedication has given you the freedom. What are some of the things that you really like about your software? Well, what I, you know, I, and I love this. I love talking about it because I've put so much time into it, but there's a yeah. couple cool little things that I like. Um, so like, um, like for the estimating, right? So basically we just used, used to be, you'd go out to the, you know, a, a house, you'd measure it all up. Um, you know, you would come back in, you would type it all out or hand write out the contract and all that. And then once the customer said, yeah, go ahead and go for it. Then you would have to create, uh, invoices, you know, or, you know, work order forms for your crews. Then you'd have to create, um, you know, material order forms. You know, you have to look at your estimate and write down every, oh, I'm going to need five of these, six of these, you know, break it all down. You know, we're talking, we're talking, you know, it could be a couple hours depending on the job, breaking it all down. And then you'd have to, you know, keep a good mind on, okay, how much money am I going to be making on this? What's the profit margins? You know, what's these going to cost? Okay. You know, and then you, you know, you got to figure out making sure that your, your percentage is good. So yeah. the system that I created now just, the estimating software is you put in what you need. Nowadays, you just basically, if you, unless it's a, a very simple roof, you just simply get a, a satellite order. You know, you just, you know, call up, get a satellite order and, you know, it pulls down all the figures that you need. So you simply basically type in the, the different numbers of the different things. And then the system does it all, generates all the forms, generates all the order forms, creates contracts, sends it to your customer. They click on a link, they sign, they send it back. Everything's done. Just a hundred percent automated, you know, beautiful, you know, and then, you know, you can go back to it anytime and you can, uh, you know, create, um, all the PDFs, like I said, all the contracts. So that's, that's the estimating software and it saves, you know, I can't tell you how many man hours per year, thousand, you know, per per person, per salesman, maybe. I don't know. It's, it's, it's amazing. Maybe not that much, but it's it's definitely hundreds and hundreds of man hours. Okay, and great. another thing sales related mm -hmm. that I mm -hmm. freaking love is inside <laughs> Podio yeah. is they have the, you know, so basically what we've done is like, because there's a lot of follow-up, right? Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. Like, like a big thing in our company is follow-up. Just like basically, unless they say, don't ever call me again 
and even sometimes maybe then, but no, they, they say, look, don't call me again. Or look, I already hired somebody else or something like that. It doesn't matter if we've tried innumerable times to contact them. We keep just going after them, text calls, emails, USPS mail, you know, whatever, whatever we can possibly do. We just keep going for years if we have to, because the system that I built, it takes a second to follow up because what happens is, is right in the system, right, right there, you can click a button to send a few different automated texts right to the, uh, the person. If they respond, it comes right on your, right in front of you and you can respond to them and have a whole text conversation. Or you click another button to send a particular generated email. Or if you wanna customize that email, you can customize it right there on the screen as well. You can click a button to send them a voicemail through a, you know, like a ringless voicemail drop right. but just one button right on all on the same screen you know and you and you we have like different pre-recorded uh voicemails depending on like where they are how long has it been has it been like if i already texted them and called them okay let me use this one you know click a button and send them a usps mail you know just one single button you know and it does all the integration sends the thing off and then a mail gets printed up and sent to them in a nice you know eight and a half by eleven you know, impossible to miss, uh, you know, things saying, Hey, you know, we've called you, you know, <laughs> right. 30 times we've texted you, we've emailed you and now we're sending you USPS mail, you know, so yeah. all at the click of the button. So it doesn't make any sense to not ever not follow up with these guys. It makes you just, you just keep following up and following up. And I can't tell you how many times that we have dredged up people that finally, decided after a year to get it done. And it's not that crazy to have somebody do an estimate and then finally get it done after a year or even longer. I've done it myself. You know, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking in the head, oh, I got to get this done in my own house, yeah. you know, getting some, you know, elective plumbing or electrical or something like that, or, you know, maybe some exterior stuff on the, you know, like the driveway or, you know, something. And I'm like, oh, nah, maybe I didn't have the money quite to do that. I wasn't ready. And I'm like a year later, I'm ready to call them and, and do them. Well, who am I going to call? I'm going to call the person who's been, you know, staying in touch with me. And, you know, and, 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 and Ronnie, you bring up such a great point. And I, and I, re, and I, I want to really call attention to this because you've brought up something so critical and so important, the fortunes in the follow-up and you've built your systems. See, people can quote it. Okay. The fortunes in the follow up, but how many actually put in systems to do the follow up mm -hmm. for them? You've built the systems that allow the follow up, and that gives you a competitive advantage. If you guys are listening to this on a podcast or in the future on a video, I'm telling you right now if you're in business, you need to use technology and systems to put in the follow up. That's where the money's at. The money's in the list, but you've got to use systems and technology to follow up on that list. If you're going to extricate all the possible dollars that you want and what ronnie has done is he's put in the time the dedication the grit the money the commitment to building the systems to do the follow-up and look at the lifestyle he's living now he i'm we're literally you're streaming this from cairo egypt yeah i'm like my right over here is the nile river like literally i mean it's late here but like Maybe right over there. Right over there is the Nile River. Right, you, know, right. you can so see he's it. He's doing you know? the Nile River, doing business, taking his family around the world. Who wouldn't want to do that? I want to do that. If you guys want to connect with Ronnie Jones on uh, social media, his YouTube channel, you should subscribe to his YouTube channel, which I did this morning, wherethejoneses.com, and see the type of life he's living. It's it's this it's it's to me it's the type of life that I feel that any ambitious entrepreneur would want to live. Um, and you're doing it because you embrace technology, even though you weren't raised on it. Yeah. I, I was, I'm doing everything I wasn't raised on. I mean, you know, I didn't travel, <laughs> you know, yeah, never traveled yeah. as a kid, no technology as a kid. You yeah. know, I mean, heck, we didn't even have like a Nintendo until I was in my teens, I think, you know, so it's like, you know, computer in the house, that was like unheard of, you know, growing up, this, this didn't happen let totally. alone cell phones or anything like that. You know, it was out, I was out of high school before I even saw a cell phone. So yeah, yeah. You know, I'm so not even that me, old, you know, I'm like, I'm 40, 41 years old. It's not like a, you know, it's not like it wasn't there. It's just, you know, my family wasn't, you know, wasn't there with it. Yeah. Yeah. Neither was mine. I, I totally understand. 
So tell me some interesting uh, opportunities that have come your way because of being on YouTube. Have you have has any kind of out of the blue kind of opportunities landed in your lap or are there things in the works because of your content that you're putting out? Well, I mean, not as many, honestly, not as many as I would have thought would have okay. come. I was actually thinking this. I was thinking that more would have come my way. I mean, there's been a few. I mean, I could say there isn't. It's definitely had, um, I mean, there's been like, you know, people have reached out to us said, hey, you want to check this out? I mean, the thing is that honestly, the, the biggest opportunity is having YouTube channels, the people that we get to meet. Okay. Uh, people, people reaching out to us and saying, Hey, you know, I know you're in the area or whatever, da, da, da. and then we you know, reach out to them, we go hang out with them or whatever. And we learn how to cook a nice authentic meal together or something like that. Right. Um, I would say the, the coolest thing that the YouTube channel has afforded is probably like on some of our trekking experiences. Like we, we really met up like in Pakistan, we went to Pakistan last year and we trekked uh, the whole family to K2, you know, it's 16 days a grueling trekking in the just, you know, some of the most inhospitable and environment in terms of, uh, you know, altitude and cold and, and that sort of thing. And, and we were able to meet up with a couple other influencers to go do this and, you know, you know, uh, work together with a trekking company and a couple sponsors to, you know, that gave us equipment and, uh, and that sort of thing that really helped with the, the cost because it's a very in expensive endeavor to just, especially with your family, uh, you know, so we, it, you know, and it takes a lot of preparation to go and do that. You're, you know, you're out there, there's no, you know, there's no electricity, you know, there's, you know, no showers, of course, there's no internet, there's, you know, there's nothing. So it's like, if something happens, you're in trouble, you got a satellite phone yeah. uh, and there's different uh, army depots out there. So it's not like if you had a major accident, you know, you're, 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 you're doomed you know, they'd yeah. have to send in a helicopter to get you out. But right. you know, so that was a, that was a major thing that kind of was available. To, I mean, it would have been available to us regardless, but it was more available to us in terms of expense because of the YouTube channel for sure. Great. So it's helping you build your network, connect with people in the local areas, uh, offset expenses because now you're partnering with people in, in kind of a, you know, community, you're building a community. How long have you had this YouTube channel? Like how long have you been posting videos? Uh, three years now. Okay, good. All right. I think, you know, my personal prediction is I was having lunch yesterday with a friend, uh, very successful in the financial services business. And I said, well, how long does it take to build a brand? He's like, oh, five to 10 years. I think in the next couple of years, you keep putting out these videos, there's going to be a a watershed moment you know it's not like every video is the same as every video i think if you keep continue to do this i don't know i could see uh national geographic wanting to do a show of you know a family traveling together and trekking together it's you know it's kind yeah, of yeah no you're cool well i mean for anybody wanting to start a youtube channel i'll give them a piece of advice make content that the american audience will like Okay. That's where the money's at. Buy 10x any other thing. The guys who make the most money have American audiences. And then of the American audiences, you have the guys that make the most money tend to be your more financially uh, subjected uh, channels and things like that. From what I've seen. Oh, okay. So they talk about money and business and mm -hmm. things like that. When you say Americanizing your content, give me an example of Americanizing your content. Like just something that Americans would be interested in. Like, you know, family traveling in the U.S., you'll see a lot more American uh, viewer base, right? Yeah. Because American viewer base, you make more money because American, you know, American advertising yes. makes a lot more money. Yep. So if you, if you have, you know, if you have a lot of viewership from different countries and the advertisers aren't trying to attract those particular bases, you're not going to make nearly as much money because you can, you can get a million views on YouTube and you can make 700 bucks from that, or you could make 12,000 bucks from those million views. Yeah. So, yeah. and I, cause I have videos that have a million views and, yeah. uh, you know, and I've obviously watched other people and I've, you know, and it just, it just really depends on where your base is. So, I mean, but we're going to be coming back to the U S uh, we're going to be, you know, getting an RV. We're going to be 
scoring all around. And I definitely expect a yeah. higher, uh, you know, percentage of uh, American viewers. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good point, which is if you want that American audience, you could probably reverse engineer and go, okay, what are the 25 <laughs> places that families would want to go? What's the dream vacation? Good. Mm -hmm. Let's go to those 25 locations since they're already being searched for in search. And there you are with your little family tip about Zion National Park or Yosemite or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Because American families, no families go to the places that we go to. Yeah, right. they just, yeah, they're not going they just to don't. Yeah. They're not going to K2. They're not, they're not going to Everest base camp. They're not, yeah. you know, not, they're just not going to these places. I mean, they're not even going to Laos or, you know, Vietnam or, yeah. You know, maybe they'll go to Iceland, maybe. But, you yeah, know, maybe. I mean, they're yeah. just they're just not happening. What they do do is they go to Yellowstone. You know, they do to right. they do go to, you know, the different national parks or yeah. you know, Banff or something in uh in Canada. And I and I we've been there. We love it there. And you know, we want to go again. So But there's yeah. guys that have there's guys that make good money um in the travel, family travel, you know, area, but they have American audiences. They make 10x what we make easy. That's crazy. Okay. So tell me some of your future plans. Like where do you plan on taking your YouTube brand? And then I'll ask you about your construction business next. So your YouTube uh, brand, have you kind of strategized where you're going to take that brand and how you're going to build it over the next few years? Yeah, actually we do. We have some, we have some plans. We're going to take the brand. Uh, we're going to, honestly, our, our channel is very personal. There's a lot of, uh, you know, it started off a very personal, you know, it's, you know, just kind of journey with the family, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to, we're going to take it to a little bit more clinical, I think a little bit more, um, straight to the point, shorter videos, uh, and, you know, just make it just about the information and not so much about the family. Yeah. And then we are going to focus, you know, when, when we come back to the States, uh, you know, cause we're going to be cruising around for a couple of years in an RV and, you know, going to all the parks, going to, because we, I foresee an Americana Renaissance, uh, here in the next year, two years, three, like a massive American Renaissance is what I'm seeing. So I feel that, so that's kind of where we're going. We're going, we're going yeah. towards the culture of America. We're going to start kind of transit. We have another project that we're going to be working on in terms of American food specifically, uh, you know, you know, just American recipes and, and that sort of thing, a project just in like a, more of a cooking channel, because in travel, what we've found is experiences are cool, but food is kind of where it's at. You know, people, people yeah. love food. People connect with food. Yeah, I think when you get into food and also specialty alcohols or craft beer or wine or, mm -hmm. you know, people that are really into bourbon, whatever that is, they get really into it. And yeah, me too. I'm, I'm a big <laughs> bourbon guy, right? Yeah. And you get into that kind of experience of the flavors. It just, it gets the juices flowing, whether it's food or, you know, uh, alcohol or things like that. I think you you tap into that specific audience. And so you do a show on bourbon or coffee or Chardonnay or Creole cooking. You just tapped into fanatics of those subjects. People, people connect hard with that stuff. Oh, you know time. what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it's a lot of people. It, it's a very broad audience oh, yeah. that, that uh, connects on that. I mean, I mean, I love our experiences. Don't get me wrong. I love our experiences. I love you know, I love the things that we've seen and done and, and all this. It's, you know, it's, it's awesome. It's a, it's great to take the family, uh, you know, and live and just be always the, the odd ones out, you know, yeah. always be the people that don't speak the language and always learning. And it's always kind of adventurous. It kind of keeps you on your toes a little bit. So I, I love that. I love that aspect. Um, but you know, I also, I also like to, uh, you know, succeed. So <laughs> I would, I definitely want to listen to the market and I want to see what the market's telling us. And I also want to have my fun while listening to the market and, you know, making money, of course. Hey, great combination. I think that's a great way to look at life, Ronnie. And that's really the essence of why I started Growth Driven. The driven part of Growth Driven is the mindset. I want to succeed. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. got that positive growth. I want to make the money. Like, I want to, mm -hmm. you know, I've got the success mind. I want the money. But I'm also... I want a lifestyle too. I don't want to just be like you are. You're not attached literally to the business. You're able to 
be exterior from it, extricate yourself from it while still having the ambitions and the lifestyle. Hey, guys, I'm with Ronnie Jones. If you haven't ca- uh, gone to his website, I want you to go to wherethejoneses.com. Later in the video, when I when I optimize this video and add the thumbnail and all that on YouTube, I'll add this link. So if you watch this a year from now, six months from now, the link will be in this video, and I want you to check it out. If you're listening on the podcast, it's where the Joneses with an S dot com. And we'll try to put that link also in our podcast version of this show. So yeah, now if you just go to YouTube and you search where the Jones, we're the only ones that are going to pop up. So. Okay, good. There you go. Awesome. I'll search them on YouTube. So now, okay. I love where you're taking the brand local food, national parks. I think that is going to be, a growth factor that's just going to take it to the brand to the whole next level. Tell me where you plan on taking your construction business. Do you have some big ambitious plans for that? Um, Well, we have another brand that we're working on as well. So maybe, I don't know. Um, We, we, we get just so much, there's so much growth in our current market right now. So that's kind of what we're working on. We're working on maybe just more uh, commercial opportunities. There's more money involved there. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're at a, we're at a point now where we really can grow. I mean, we did get hurt a bit by uh, you know COVID this year, but honestly, we're making a major comeback towards the end. That I think we're still going to be up year wow. over year, which is amazing to us because our first quarter we were just you know we were decimated. We were like seventy percent down or something com- uh, mm-hmm. year over year, you know, to 2019, and and to pull this out is it's really good, but some of these automations that I put in place really kind of started rolling with some new employees. And, you know, we had to kind of restructure the way that we go about, um, you know, doing sales and who's, you know, we do it differently than most every other country, a a company, roofing company, or, you know, sales related company out there uh, and a couple different, I mean, there's a couple of people that do it like us, but most people don't. And what we found is that it works out way better and we're able to get more money per employee out. So we were able to reduce costs because we had to, mm-hmm. you know, because you have a 70% reduction in the first quarter. You're like, ah, you know, so you have to like really tighten it up. Uh, but uh, it all kind of converged very nicely for us. Uh, so I think we just, we have a lot of growth in there. We have another brand. We have a couple different brands in the construction uh, business in St. Louis. One, we're trying to get off, off the ground as a uh, sort of a competition, but something that could possibly be brought to other markets as well. Okay, great. So you're building other brands. And I think the reason why, I don't think, I, I know for sure, the reason why you survived COVID is you had the systems to lean on. Yeah. If you didn't have those systems and you're still in an old style, uh, I bet you a lot of your competition got wiped out because they didn't have that core strength to lean mm-hmm. on to survive something like this. Yeah. And what's funny is, is in, in 2019, towards the end of 2019, we started switching towards more sales over the phone. And, and this is, it was very uh, counterintuitive. And my business partner, it was like, oh, I don't think so. There's no way we're going to make money. So I'm like, okay, well, let me pilot this thing. So here I was in Mexico city at the time. And I said, okay, I'm going to run the sales. I'm going to have people on the ground and we're going to see it. Well, I just smashed the sales. I mean, just obliterated. I said, well, I think it works. So now let's get somebody in here doing what I'm doing because I am working, you know, I was working eight, 10 hours a day working, you know, one, I had a point to prove. So I had to work hard. And uh, two, I had to figure it out because in doing it, I was seeing all the different roadblocks that I would run into or what somebody in my position would run into. So I did pilot it myself personally. I got myself in there personally. And then eventually we brought somebody else in and uh, we brought somebody in that could handle a lot of different things and was used to working on the computer and all that because in the construction business, technology and roofers and contractors, they they, like you said earlier, they don't really mix. So right. I needed to find a way of how do I get somebody who's going to use the systems, but yet 
also is construction oriented and know about that. So we found this really happy medium where we basically split this particular job, this hat into two different parts. So we got the best of both worlds and it ended up working out really good. So when COVID came, we already had our salesperson 100% trained on being on the computer all day, basically. And, and doing sales and automations from that when we had the construction guy that didn't have to do that. All he had to do was just be the eyes and ears on the ground doing all the, uh, you know, measuring on the roof or doing inspections or taking pictures and that sort of thing. So it, we just ended up being really lucky in that regard that we were already coveting our, I hate to even use that as, a, as an I, adjective, yeah, but whatever, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Totally. Hey, I, I, you know, yeah, you got fortunate and lucky, but you know, uh, luck follows those who innovate and work hard. And I think you just, for whatever, sixth sense, spidey senses, whatever, whatever we want to do, I think entrepreneurs are always looking at five steps ahead, regardless of what the environment says. They, they just have this intuit, intuition that hey, this is where we should go. And then a crisis hits and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I followed my intuition. And I put a lot of hard work into my intuition and here, here we are, the beneficiary of it. Yeah. Hey, when you come out with these other brands, I want to have you back on the show again and kind of help us and share with, you know, the journey that you took on these new brands post COVID. I think okay. there's going to be a lot of people reinventing themselves and, you know, hey, I want to hear the journey about a guy who survived COVID business-wise and then built brands after COVID and then succeeded. That's going to be high interest. Before we go, Ronnie, and thank you so much for your time and being here. Really got a lot out of it. And thank I know you. you're, Love, you're glad to be here. I like talking about it, so it's easy. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, thanks for sharing. One, if you could give one last tip to somebody, whether it's on YouTube or building a construction business or being an entrepreneur, what's the one last thing you'd like to share with you that's been a key to your success? I would say, man, one thing, geez, there's a couple things. Uh, I would just say, don't be happy that you be happy that you're not dependent upon. You know what I mean? Don't try to be the big guy. Try not to be the big guy. Try to let somebody else, you know, because a lot of people are like, well, no one can do it if I'm not doing it. You know, they can, they get this thing. I'm like, well, that's a, that you just, you're just putting on the chains, man. Yeah. So I, I say, be happy if, if, you know, if, if you're not dependent upon, that's fantastic. You know, as long as, as long as, uh, you know, you still have control in the end, as long as you still have the money coming in. I mean, come on, it's about the money, right? It's about that money coming in. So, uh, you know, and obviously doing something that, you know, is fulfilling and, but, uh, but you can fulfill yourself all the time without money. But anyway, I would just say, be happy that you got somebody else to do it and that they feel they're indispensable. It's okay to have people that feel that they're, it's great to have it. Don't, don't worry about being indispensable yourself. I think that's a, I think I've seen a lot of people get into that. They're like, well, oh, I just, I can't. Uh, and then, and also in that same vein, let things fail. You know, you learn a lot from it. Let somebody take, let somebody else, let go of the reins, give it to somebody else. And if they crash, they crash. If you end up losing a little bit of money, okay. But now you learned a lesson and, and I guarantee you're going to learn a lesson. You're going to learn a lot of data from that. And you're going to start setting up that, that training of yourself to get, you know, back a bit. Yeah, no, I think those are great takeaways. Build a team. You don't have to be the big guy on campus. Like mm -hmm. you said, as long as you're controlling the expenditures and you're making the money, who really cares who has the limelight? Exactly. I mean, yeah, because believe me, I still pay attention to the bank accounts. <laughs> I still, you, you know, yeah. you know, it's because <laughs> people spend money, you know, and I don't like spending money, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, uh oh, un unauthorized expenditure. Ronnie's going to be here any minute, <laughs> hopping into your chat. <laughs> here he comes. <laughs> yeah. Build a team. And I agree with you. Let, let failure happen. Don't be so afraid of it because yeah. I think if you're willing to experience failure, then you survive it. But if you're sensitive to failure. You have to take some risks. You have to, 
that you just you have no choice if you want to have i mean you have to take some risks if you're if you're mad about your situation you probably haven't taken you know as many risks as you should have and that doesn't mean you just put it all on a red or something but you do have to yeah. you do have to take some kind of risk i think there's cal- you can take risk and have some calculation and know that like you said you don't put everything all your eggs in one basket you can survive it and learn a great lesson well hey Man, I got so much out of this show. I know that people that listen to today and will listen in the future will get a lot out of it. Looking forward to having you on the show again. Guys, I'm with Ronnie Jones. Go to YouTube, type in Where are the Joneses, and you're going to find his channel. You'll find all his links, and uh, hope you enjoyed as, as much as I did. Thanks once again for being here on Growth Driven. All right. Thanks a lot.